Imaging of the brain has been a challenge for all imaging modalities from the beginning of radiology uh, because even though the brain is a very eloquent organ and can do neurological exam, it's in a hard bony box that makes it completely unapproachable to a physical exam. <laughs> The, the role of imaging in, uh, in medicine nowadays is twofolded. One is for improving the marking of abnormalities that is disease specific. The second aspect is to monitor online what is happening in our brain and help people to cope better with stress and with trauma and with various emotional suffering that are related to psychiatric and neurological disorders. How do we take measurements of brain structure and brain activity to find out about a person's thoughts or a person's diseases? The modality currently most used in neuroimaging are CT, MRI, angiography, both diagnostic and therapeutic, and to a lesser extent, PET. CT and MRI have allowed physicians to look at the brain in a non-invasive fashion, which has changed also patient management. Computerized tomography is a technology that involves taking multiple x-ray projections. The patient is put in a tubular structure that has a ring of many x-ray sources and opposite many x-ray detectors. Multiple x-ray images from different angles enables us to receive multiple images of the head and brain. Now we can actually see the soft tissue of the normal brain and the abnormal brain. MRI it is based on a phenomenon which is called NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. The patient is put into a very big tubular double magnet, which is then put on and off. The fact that there are so many different signals coming out can give us a very, very good images of the tissues of the brain and the spinal cord. The answer to which modality is to be used uh, lies within the patient's condition and the purpose of the study. If we're talking about an acute situation, usually CT is enough. MRI, we use it in less acute situations when more details are needed. CT uses a, a lot of uh, radiation, while MRI is not using radiation at all. CT is much easier to perform in a claustrophobic patient since the machine is much more open than an MRI machine. CT scan can take one minute to the entire body, while MRI will take almost 30 minutes only for the brain. MRI is better to pick the brain tissue and the ischemic changes after the surgery, while CT is better to show the bony structure, which is not demonstrated at all in the MRI scan. We can see acute hemorrhage in the brain better in the CT than in MRI. We tend to use MRI for the follow-up of brain tumors, for the investigation of headache. We tend to use only MRI in age population of born children till the age of 18 years because of the recommendation not to do CT when it's not necessary. In any circumstance that the CT hasn't solved the problem, then we need to use the MRI. This is a patient who came in with severe headache without trauma. So we can see that there is a subdural hemorrhage surrounding the left hemisphere. We wanted to understand a little bit why did the patient has this subdural hemorrhage. So we also did an MRI study. And on this MRI study, we see again the subdural hemorrhage, which is a little bit heterogeneous. We are seeing some mass effect on the brain parenchyma, and we're seeing some enhancement of the entire dura of the brain, suggesting some other pathology in this case an intracranial hypotension. So we're seeing that in some instances that there is no trauma involved, we see that the MRI adds a lot to our ability to diagnose other situations. We also use MRI in fetal imaging. This is a fetus at the age of 32 weeks gestational age. This is the fetus. This is the mother. 
see this is head presentation while the head is down and the body of the fetus is up. This is helping the obstetricians to decide uh, about the prognosis of uh, certain pregnancies. Some people assume that because an MRI study has a much better picture quality, they should get it in every circumstance. But this attitude could be dangerous because in an acute situation like a suspicion of hemorrhage or an acute trauma, a patient should get a fast study that has enough details to evaluate his situation but doesn't involve long study like an MRI and could harm the patient in this situation. PET-CT is a combined medical imaging technology using two modalities on the same screen at the same time, CT as we know it and PET. PET is positron emission tomography, a nuclear medical technology that uses an isotope that emits positrons. The emission of positrons is increased in areas of biological activity, which are usually related to tumor activity in the specific areas. And geography has evolved from a diagnostic tool into a therapeutic tool as CT and MRI have taken over the diagnostic part. And like most plumbing problems, either something is blocked and you have to open it or something is leaking and you have to close it. It will be a case of a patient with an acute stroke, CT angiography, which shows a blockage of the right middle cerebral artery due to a clot that came from the carotid below, which also is closed. This was an acute situation. We have a time window. Time is brain. In angiography here, we can see that this is actually opened, even though there's a very tight stenosis there. We have to open it before we can treat the clot above. Once we opened it, we go right away to this thing is more dangerous. We see a complete occlusion here of the right middle cerebral artery. This is the stump that's left of it. We have to open this up. We go in with what's called a stent retriever, and it actually just pulls out the clot mechanically. And this is right after one pass. We can see it completely opened it up. Now we have to go back down and open up the area that was stenosed originally and we could see the stent here and the flow through it so that it will not cause trouble in the future and this patient recovered completely and this is something that was usually a death sentence before this. This is a major uh, revolution in the treatment of stroke. Functional MRI is a technology that is using the ability to detect different blood flow into different areas in the brain. So when the brain is involved in a specific activity, there is an increased blood flow into that specific region where this activity is occurred. We can use functional MRI to try to localize those activities inside the brain itself. In order to train people to modify the brain activity, we need to be very efficient in targeting specific brain areas that we have some assumptions about their importance for their mental health. In our case, our interest is in a region that is located deep in the brain. It's called amygdala. The importance of these brain regions is related to psychiatric and neurological diseases like depression, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, and even Alzheimer. This area, since it's so deep in the brain located, is very hard to detect with the regular cap of EEG and few electrodes. In order to improve these methods, we are using EEG together with fMRI, functional MRI, which is a very good method to detect activity all over the brain, including deep areas. The goal is to use this method in order to give people a tool to talk with the brain in a way and to train themselves how to modulate brain areas. And this is done through what is called neurofeedback. And the feedback can be auditory, music, visual like movies and virtual reality or augmented reality that uh, is interacting with the brain. At the end of the day, in, in few years, will be just part of what we're already using uh, in our cell phones. It, we will be able to connect to that online and uh, improve our uh, regulation in, in real time. We don't have to worry, of course, that this gives us some glass brain or violates our mental privacy, makes people able to look into our thoughts, because these techniques are today just doing baby steps, so there's no need to worry about going to see a radiologist for a brain scan. With structural MRI data, we can find out whether someone has a disease or not, whether someone is going to convert in the future 
to a specific disease uh, or not. So there are many different ways in which you can apply classifiers to structural brain imaging data to extract um, useful information for clinicians.